My name is Kirat Beer Singh. Today's date is December 26th, 2015. I was born in 1984, so I was uh, a few months old. So uh, growing up, my parents would um, hint that there were things going on uh, in Punjab, and uh, we used to live in Punjab. I lived there till 1996. Um, we lived uh, near Husharpur. Sure, um, so uh, on the radio, we would hear about things happening, uh, we would hear that term quite a lot on the news. Uh, we would hear that there are um, curfews, a lot of curfews uh, happening at the time. Uh, we weren't allowed to leave the house. Um, we, we were told to stay inside um, and um, just hearing a lot of activity on the news and just people were scared. Uh, my experiences are, you know, as I was growing up yeah. in Punjab and things happening, you know, growing up four or five years old. Uh, in terms of news, there was really not a lot of truth being told. There's not a lot of, even, you know, um, news stories were not being really shown until I realized what was going on much later. So my parents have talked to me about that, you know, as I started to grow up and started to think about why is this like it? Why is this like this? And uh, when we went to Hermandir Sahib, um, we saw that there are bullet holes uh, and damage in the in the area. Uh, and I asked them questions about why is this? Why is this happening? And the you know the answer was that you know sometimes you have to fight for what's right, and that's the reason why there was damage done at the Darbar Sahib. As a kid, I, I was scared, you know, I was like, why, why is this happening? In November, um, we, uh, we used to live in Nagpur, which is the uh, central part of India. Uh, so no, I was born in uh, September 84, uh, but my parents, um, I was born in Punjab, but my parents lived in Nagpur, which is uh, central India. There were not a lot of Sikhs uh, where my parents lived, um, and they've told me stories uh, about, you know, what was their situation in November of '84, living away from all the rest of the Sikhs. And um, uh, after Indira Gandhi was killed in October 31st, 1984, um, my dad was going to work on his uh, motorcycle, and. Um, when he got there, he was told to turn around and go back. Uh, my dad hadn't heard anything on the news, uh, but he was told, like, Why, what are you doing here? You need to go from here. You need to leave. You don't know what's going on. So he came back home uh, and uh, closed all the doors and, you know, put on the news and, and on the radio and uh, just tried to listen to what was happening. Uh, and soon after, um, Few months actually, we just packed up and left and uh, went to Punjab. We left Nagpur altogether. I think um, just the attitude towards sex changed a lot. Um, so, uh, especially in areas where there were not a lot of sex living. Um, so, I think most people tried to, you know, leave the area and go back to Punjab or somewhere where it would be you know, safer to be with other six. I mean, growing up, we really were not told a lot of things. Um, you know, it was more of uh, self-discovery after to see what really happened. Um, and, uh, you know, back then we really had no idea. We were sort of guarded from a lot of information, especially in India where the media doesn't really tell you what's happening. So, uh, growing up, and then we figured it out that it was, you know, government forces infiltrating the Sikh Panth. We heard a lot of um, encounters, you know, they would um, just pick up people who they suspected to be bad. Um, they just, they would pick them up and take them, put them in jail, and, um, um, kill them, in many, many cases, torture them, um, and then plant guns next to them and make them look like bad people. Uh, but we've then we sort of, you know, we understood growing up that the Punjab police is not to be trusted. Uh, 
Um, we saw a lot of injustice by the police. The police, uh, largely, uh, police uh, was under the influence of um, the government who tried to suppress um, people. So it was more of an act of suppression rather than justice by the police. When we moved to Punjab, we moved to the city. Um, so, I mean, my parents tried to shelter us from any kind of exposure. As far as, um, you know, when we would hear that, you know, there's stuff happening in the area, and we would be told to stay inside and curfew. And at the time, when you're a kid, you really don't know what's happening and why it's happening. So, it would be all I would feel and all I remember feeling is just being scared that you know there's some bomb blast that happened nearby or there's some gunfire that we, we heard during the night uh, but uh, it would just be a, a feeling of being scared and, and feeling that maybe we're not safe yeah why did all this happen in 1984 um, uh, I mean knowing what I know now uh, I can put the pieces together of why why it happened uh, you know it really starts with um, 1947 and the independence of India from the British and the Sikhs not really getting any rights right so now we know you know the reasons behind the uprising the reason behind the protests that the Sikhs led and you know 1978 resolutions and how Punjabi is not an official language of Punjab and um, you know, Sikhi, you know, there's, there was no Sikh marriage that was accepted, right? So the Anandkaraj was not, um, uh, you know, accepted by the government. And the river waters, which were diverted out of the farms, and excessive taxation, and just being treated unfairly in, on, in your own land. So that was the reason. The system is, is corrupt. You know, a lot of Eastern countries, and not just India, but many countries, um, laws can be bought, and people can escape justice, and um, that's what has happened. The people at power have protected those who did wrong, and people who did wrong were never brought to justice. There is no transparency in a system that protects people who've done bad things. So, um, you know, in the, hopefully in the future we can have a system which is transparent um, and allows justice to prevail. So anyone who was not alive back then and generally just wants to know, you know, why do we talk about it? Why do we talk about 84? Why is it important for us to understand that we have rights? Um, they should learn about 84, they should learn about the history of India, how it was formed, how the people that are minorities have been oppressed, uh, not just six, but holistically look at everyone in India who is targeted for what they believe in. Uh, people who were treated like second class citizens, whose rights were not um, respected, rights were not given. Uh, then you'll understand that in a place that calls itself the largest democracy is really <laughs> just a, a phrase, right? So, and understand what our gurus stood for. Understand that Guru Har Gobind Ji, who started the tradition of Miri Piri to rise up in self-defense, um, you know, to understand that this is our duty, our job, to fight for the oppressed people. I think the most important thing is for everyone to uh, educate themselves and educate uh, with the facts, understand the facts. Uh, there are a lot of opinions out there, uh, a lot of people who pretend to know what actually happened, uh, but understand the facts and not just against the six or with the six, but holistically look at democracies around the world, understand how uh, a good justice system works and excel at um, becoming the, the leader in your community.